Hey everyone, my name is Vedelin and if you have clicked on this video just because of the thumbnail, you should probably go and watch something else. In this video, we're going to have a look at the latest model by Black Forest Labs called Flux1 Context Dev. This model is open weights model that allows you to both generate and edit images. We're going to be using this model to generate some cute animated characters, go through interior and architectural designs. Then we're going to generate a woman that we're going to be using in order to edit in different environments and see how well the model preserves the characters. Let's get started. If you want to become a better AI engineer, go and subscribe to MLX Pro. There, you can find a complete AI engineering bootcamp that starts from Python and classical machine learning fundamentals. Then you're going to go through what LOMs are, how you can do better prompts, and then you're going to be learning how you can build RAX, CAX, agentic applications and agentic workflows. So if you want to become a better AI engineer and get access to eight different projects that are available on GitHub, go and subscribe to MLX Tool Pro. Thank you. The Fox1 context dev model released by Black Forest Web came out along with this blog post on their web page. Here they say that this is an open weights model for image editing, but I also note that this model is actually able to also generate images. It is not required for you to put in an input image as well. So, of course, they have a lot of examples, a lot of benchmarks here showing you that they have improved most of the model capabilities. The model weights are available on Hugging Face and in this video we're going to be loading the full model on a Google Cloud Notebook. Of course, you can see here a lot more examples. Note that this is actually a 12 billion parameter model. This is quite a bit larger compared to their one Flux1 one dev model and note here that they have Flux1 dev non-commercial license. So make sure that you go and read that before using any of the outputs in your commercial work. I am in my local cursor instance and this was run on a Google Club. So you can see here that this actually used A100 with 40 gigabytes of VRAM. Pretty much all of the RAM was used when I was generating the images. And you see after I have actually loaded the model how much VRAM we're going to be using. So the thing about this Flux1 context dev model is that it is not fully supported in the stable versions of the diffusers library. So we need to actually just pull the latest master or dev version of the library and then I'm going to be using the accelerate library in order to load the model on the code device. So after you install the diffusers library, you will now be having access to flux context pipeline. This is going to be the pipeline that we're going to be using in order to do the actual prediction and generation of the images. In order to load this model, you need to initialize this pipeline with from pre-trained. So here you're going to be passing the weights of the model. Note that you need to have access to the model and you also need to have your hugging face token into your local environment. I'm going to be using the binary float 16 to load the model and then I'm going to be putting the model on the CUDA device. So this is taking uh, roughly on the Google Club notebook two to three minutes to download all of the files. And after loading the files, you can see here that this took roughly 32 to 33 gigabytes of VRAM. But during peak generation, this was close to 40. And as of now, this model doesn't have any uh, GGUF or other quantized versions as far as I'm aware of, at least ones that I would be using instead of the full model. So next we're going to be uh, using two parameters. Those parameters are actually taken from the official Hugging Face space demo by Black Forest Labs. I'm going to be using a guidance scale of 2.5. You can think about this parameter as how well the model is going to be following the prompt. Of course, this is very probabilistic, but it should work 
in our case pretty well as you see from the generations and then the number of steps that the model is going to iterate over the images before taking you or giving you the final output both of those parameters are going to be configurable right here within the generate image function which we're really going to be using as a helper so most of this is actually again taken from the green face space by black forest labs so note that every time i'm generating an image i am generating a new seed so when i pretty much stuck to a single seat i didn't get good results from this model so i essentially fall back into generating random seats for each of the generation and some generations were pretty good while others were uh, quite honestly horrible i'm not really sure why the static seeding doesn't work as good as one might expect but in this case this is what i did so if you have passed in a starting image uh, this is going to be passed into the pipeline to the image parameter then we're going to be passing in the width and the height of the start image and uh, otherwise if we don't have a start image uh, you can see that we are actually using just the pipeline with the prompt guidance scale inference steps and the generator right here after we have this generate image helper function we can start with our first image ultra photorealistic action shot of a hypercar at night at monaco circuit so uh, this was my first attempt at generating an image note that this took roughly 15 seconds and this is the result so i was pretty blown away of the result of this generation in particular you can note the details of the car the brake calipers uh, the rims here you can see the details of the car the headlights pretty much it looked pretty good i'm not really sure what that part right here is but otherwise it looks pretty stunning along with the blurry background as well i'm not really sure why the brake calipers are blurry here but otherwise this appears to be looking quite cool uh, another try that i did was to generate this jesco like hypercar somewhere in the desert uh, you can see here that it is actually quite good again it is simulating uh, driving but unfortunately there is no driver inside so just a bit of a minus uh, this doesn't look exactly like a jesco or riesco but it looks pretty cool again as a generation try so these were the first two and then i have continued with animating a character the original fox one model was pretty good at generating very cute characters and in this case i wanted this to generate a baby fox uh, which is going to be sleeping on top of a mushroom so this is the resulting image and it looks quite amazing honestly so i really liked that so i wanted to test the editing of the fox one context dev model and now i have passed the actual fox image to the input and i wanted to put this baby fox into a modern city like environment and you can see that it actually kept pretty much the fox characteristics you can see here the ears the eyes pretty much everything was kept pretty nicely and uh, the generation of this model is quite amazing honestly at least for an open model that is so the next thing that i have tried is how well does this model behave with text so i created this retro futuristic recruitment poster and this is the result join the void walkers defend the frontier -er. Uh, note that this was actually added in the text right here actually the text is completely accurate it added these walkers behind as well but other than that it looks uh, pretty amazing so if you want to actually recreate these images uh, every time that i run an image within the notebook that is going to be available within the github repository uh, there is a seed that I'm printing, so you should be able to reproduce exactly these prompts. Now we are going into interior design. 
I wanted a living room in Scandinavian style, very minimalistic, pretty good. You can see that the generation actually looks like something that is very similar to Flux 1. Of course, in these types of images, you can probably do a lot of edits. On the next one, I wanted to do a Japanese style kitchen. So you can see here the result. It looks uh, quite cool. So for example, here another edit might be a great to change the tone of the furniture or something else. But overall, I would say that it looks good. Uh, of course, there are some quirks, if you will. Uh, you can note the white things here. Those two are very uh, near one another. Those are pretty much spaced correctly. So there are quirks, but overall the generations are very good looking again for such a model. So on the architectural style, I have added this prompt for generating essentially a beach house or a viewer. And you can see the result again. I would say that the photo realism of this one context depth model is at least appears to me to be better than flex one def of course we have a very large model as well and the editing capabilities are pretty amazing note the detail of the waves down here uh, this is pretty much what amazed me so the final architectural design that i wanted to do this house within the woods uh, this one looked a bit creepy if I'm honest and there are some stuff here that I'm not really sure what they are but overall the style of the forest uh, looks pretty authentic I would say and now for the interesting part how good this model is on generating photorealistic people so here I wanted a uh, woman leaning against her sport motorcycle and you can see the result of that overall it looks pretty stunning with the background the detail on the motorcycle uh, you can see here clutch the brakes the head white the suspension uh, it looks pretty good with the length of it here right here very good note that here we have probably a bit too much whites at the end uh, but that's those are minor details i would say let's see how well this is going to be edited uh, note that she's currently within a jacket uh, the hair and uh, pretty much the jeans of the style is now going to be changed so i wanted to be placing her within a penthouse supposedly same woman is within a dress a night dress that is and she's looking over her shoulder in the camera so again this looked pretty good note that most of the woman face was actually preserved and one might say that she is the same woman uh, of course i would say that this one looks a bit more realistic compared to this one but with some prompting and some generations you might get better results here the same supposedly woman placed within a casino table as you can see here the details of the background again appear to be uh, quite good the cards note that she is holding a card as well of course there are some bugs if you will on these cards or some of these cards but the focus on the cards on her face and her hair etc most of this looks pretty stunning and the same woman can be used in other um, environments as well so i would say that this looks exactly the same as the woman from the first image and this was the source image for the woman itself uh, note that the number of fingers are also correct i would say uh, let's see in in the first image she didn't have this ring now she's wearing this ring let's check for example her nails yeah they, they look pretty identical at least to me so 
I would say that this is a very good model at editing existing images, at least as far as humans go. And I, the end, I have tried to get the same woman, age her a bit in her late 30s, so we would be able to get some differences on her face and on her skin. And now she's supposedly advertising an anti-aging cream or something like that. So uh, you can essentially get this same AI generated woman and use it in advertising and other products. As you can see here now, she's a bit at least looks a bit older uh, in a totally complete environment with a totally complete background with a white dress now. And you can see that the main characteristics of her face and skin, etc., are preserved. So again, this model appears to be performing quite well on those types of images. And at the end, I wanted to take a special cat, at least to me. Uh, this is Buffy. And she's quite an amazing cat with quite a big belly. As you can see, this is not just fur. This is her actual belly, so you can imagine how well fat she is. I'm going to read you the prompt itself. So, ultra photorealistic scene, keep the same female cat, put the cat in front of a kebab shop waiting for her kebab portion. So, this is the thing that I imagine when I think of Buffy, her favorite place. This is the actual result, and I'm quite amazed of the scenery around Buffy. Of course, this cat doesn't look like anything like Buffy, probably just the eyes and her fur. But other than that, the scenery is quite good and I'm quite amazed and amused by this model. So this is it for this video. We've seen the Flux One Context Dev model running in a Google Club notebook environment. Note that this model is quite beefy and you will need a proper hardware, at least as of now, to run it. We've seen the model's abilities to both generate and edit existing images. And I'm pretty blown away by this open model. It looks like that within a couple of iterations, these models are going to be even better than one would have imagined. And it seems like that these models are now going to be used in practice. The text generation was pretty astounding to me. It blended very well the fonts within the poster that I have wanted to create. So overall, it looked pretty good. Thank you for watching, guys. Please like, share and subscribe. Also, join the Discord channel that I'm going to link down into the description of this video. Go and subscribe to MX4 Pro to get a full AI engineering bootcamp. And let me know down in the comments how well the Flux1 context dev model is and some of your prompts that gave you good results. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.